Just, just bad enough. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 14 and 15. Angels everywhere. It seems that angels are indeed everywhere in everything you read or watch these days, right? Uh, and we know for a fact that the Bible is all about Jesus. But angels are there from Genesis to Revelation. They play a big part in the last of the last days, especially as we lead up to the return of Christ. Only three angels are identified by name in the Bible. Gabriel, Michael, the archangel, and Lucifer, the fallen angel. Yet angelic beings are mentioned at least 273 times in 34 books of the Bible. While we don't know exactly how many angels there are, we do know from Scripture that an exceedingly large number of angels exist. Hebrews 12, 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Innumerable. Angels are divided into two groups. Fallen angels, bound, well, actually three, group, three groups. Fallen angels, bound angels, and angels. One third of the angels joined Satan in his rebellion, Revelation 12, 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. One third of the angels fell with Satan's rebellion. Are demons fallen angels the most common alternative explanation for the origin of demons demons came about in the new testament jesus dealt with demons for the first time demons uh, some people think could be the nephilim of genesis 6 which were destroyed in the flood their disembodied souls became the demons while the bible does not specifically say what happened to the souls of the nephilim when they were killed it is unlikely that god would destroy the nephilim in the flood only to allow their souls to cause greater evil as demons the most biblically consistent explanation for our origin, for the origin of the demons is that they're actually just fallen angels, not just. I mean, they're very wicked fallen angels, angels who rebelled against God with Satan. Angels everywhere. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, and no marvel, and no marvel. Don't be surprised. Galatians 1, 6 says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that calls you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Galatians 1, 9, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that you, other than you have received, let him be accursed. Don't be surprised that there will be spiritual entities active in the world in the last days. Don't be surprised because men will also pervert the gospel with the help of demons and demonic influence. We must try every word spoken to us by what? The word of God. We must try the lives of these people that are trying to teach us a false gospel. We must not trust anyone until verified by the scriptures and their lives. Therefore, we must know the scriptures ourselves as good as we can. We've got to do our homework about everything today. You've got to do your homework about stuff. Vaccines, COVID, Israel, Palestinians, Russia, the president, and the UFOs that are going to be revealed in a few days. There's truth about the UFOs that's going to be revealed. We've got to do our own research and homework on these things. You can't just depend on what the media tells you. I mean, you're going to get what they want you to think. The brainwashing, one-sided, you must do this or else version. Angels are everywhere in creation. Israel's early years, Jesus' birth and the resurrection, Israel's return in 1948, saw a great increase in signs in the skies. We have had a steady increase in apparitions of Mary over the years. Actors and musicians, influence on culture, abortions, pedophilia, sex trafficking, homosexuality, sex transitioning, Christian persecution, hatred of the Bible, hatred of Israel, love of Palestinians and Islam, racist claims, rioting, civil unrest, disease, COVID, uh, and hatred of the United States have all increased since 1948 when Israel became a nation. All this wickedness is exponentially increasing. And even today, it has gone off the charts, the wickedness. Satan knows, since he could not stop Israel from becoming a nation again, that his time is short. His goal was to wipe them out during World War II. You know, six million Jews died. 
half of them. He almost did it. And now we've got Jesus and the Bible. And we have all this demonic influence. So we know we can certainly expect his activity to increase to greater levels in these last days. We can expect his activity to increase. We are spiritual creatures. We are spiritual creatures. We know in our hearts that Satan is alive and well. We know what his agenda is. First, to destroy Israel. Secondly, to destroy a Christian's ability to influence others for Jesus. He does this two ways. False teaching and deception. False teaching and deception is how Satan is attacking the church and the world today. So don't be surprised at these things. And he's using angels, fallen angels, demons to do his bidding and promote his deception. As we read earlier, one third of the angels followed Satan's rebellion against God. They were deceived themselves into a following a greater deceiver. Satan deceives by lying. That's all he can do, basically. Just lie, deceive, and destroy. He is a liar and a deceiver from the beginning. A good lie is a very powerful thing. <laughs> a good lie given by a good liar can destroy. Can destroy a family, a business, a community, even a nation. Even the world. Satan has been a master false teacher. He tells just enough of the truth to make you believe the lie. Remember the garden of Eden? Yea, hath God said, Satan tries to get Eve to not trust what God is saying. Genesis 3, 5, Satan said, For God doth know that in the, in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He told a lie, but wrapped in the truth. Very subtle. The Bible says the serpent was more subtle than any other creature. Did you catch the lie in Genesis 3, 5? Yes, their eyes would be open, for their innocence would be gone. Yes, they would know good and evil now, since their innocence was gone. But be as gods? Not exactly. Satan appealed to their pride. You will be a God like God was his lie he told to them. No, they did not become gods, but actually lost their perfect innocent state and would eventually die after years of hard work and frustration. Satan was right on two out of three. And on third claim, he was actually almost telling the truth. They did become God of their own fate and had dominion over the earth, but it was not divine in any way, they lost their divine spark. They lost any semblance of divinity in eternity. So don't go up against Satan yourself. Eve messed up. She should have got help from Adam. Of course, I don't know how much help he would have been. He probably was standing close by the whole time. <laughs> Adam would have been a good in our military, wouldn't he? I'm not going to get involved. Uh, we, need, we need strong men. Don't go up Satan against yourself. I don't care how strong you are, though, because he's too smart, he's too cunning, too subtle for me and you. Do what the greatest angel of all did. Here's what Michael, the most powerful angel of all, Michael the archangel, in Jude 9, he said, Mark, yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but he said, the Lord rebuked thee, Satan. Michael didn't try to rebuke him, so why do we? I've heard preachers say, I'm going to kick old Slewfoot out of this church. Well, Slewfoot, I hate it when preachers call him names. I mean, he is a powerful angelic being. We don't give him any respect, but we have to give him credit for his power. And, uh, you know, don't tell me you're going to kick Slewfoot out of the church unless... Uh, you might be the one that needs to go first. I mean, he's the powerful, the powerful Michael gave Satan and his angels over to God and let him handle the devil and his crew. That's what we're supposed to do. Let God handle it. 
There's some marvels, incredible things that God is going to do, such as John 5, 28. Marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in the which the, all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and they shall come forth. People will be raised from the dead and given new bodies. So don't be surprised about satanic influence, angelic beings, fallen angels, and don't be surprised that one day people are going to be taken from this earth, raised from the dead, and go to heaven. People will be raised from the dead and given new bodies. That's pretty incredible. So don't be surprised when Satan tries to do marvelous things himself. He will use deception that could fool the very elect if possible. Matthew 24, 24. For thou shalt arise false Christs and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The coming great UFO deception. Demonic powers behind the powers already have pushed deception about race, human sexuality, globalism, morality, government, conservatives, Israel, and the media propagates all of this continually day after day. Some angels just rebel more than others, you know. The angels of Genesis 6 they apparently rebelled and had offspring with human women. According to Jude, these angels are in chains of darkness because they left their first estate. Remember I said there's fallen angels, there's bound angels, and there's good angels. The bound angels are the ones who thought in their crazy minds that they could have offspring, hybrid humans, but God destroyed them in the flood and they're... Uh, some people believe that's the demons today. We talked about that. I don't know. But regardless, there are fallen angels in the world that hate humanity and hate Jesus Christ and hate the church and hate the gospel. So don't be surprised at all this activity in the last days because things are getting ready to wrap up. Jesus is coming for his church. Secondly, Satan can transform himself. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. 14. For Satan himself is transformed, transformed into an angel of light. He can seem like light. But Jesus is the true light of the world. Satan can have all the answers, he thinks. Satan was an angel, you know, a cherubim, beautiful. He's a liar and deceiver. He can trick people. He can make you believe a black cow is white. He can make you believe any lie. How do you combat him? Know the truth. They teach counterfeiters. To recognize a counterfeit dollar? No, they teach counterfeit, I'm not, not counterfeiters, but they teach counter guys in the FBI who are supposed to recognize counterfeit currency. They teach them to know a real currency, every part of it. They don't teach them anything about counterfeits. They teach them to know the real thing and they'll recognize the counterfeit. That's what we should do. We should know the truth. We should know Jesus, who is the real thing. And we will recognize the false very quickly. Know his word, his truth. He'll guide you into his word and into his truth. Many Christians don't know Jesus like they should. They don't pray much. They don't read the Bible much. They don't go to church much. So they're easy targets for Satan to deceive. Jesus warned about deception more than anything else in the Bible except hell. Satan's greatest sin was his pride. Isaiah 14, 12 and, through, 12 and 13. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Pride, pride. He tempted Eve with her pride. He will tempt you with your pride. You're the most important person in the universe, he will tell you. You deserve this. You are better than them. You should be doing that. You should be praised. You should be getting all the credit. You should have vengeance on these people. Things like that. All part of pride. Satan is the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. He's blinded the minds of people that believe not. Yet feel sorry for some of the people today that are trying to deceive us and wreck this uh, nation of ours. Uh, feel sorry for them a little bit <laughs> because they're so deceived. Satan is the God of this world. Satan is also the God of the atmosphere around the earth. Ephesians 2, 2. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. 
You know what happens to people as they become disobedient to the word of God, they fail to accept Christ as Savior, and they open themselves up to demonic influence and even possession at the worst point. But God has already defeated him through Jesus Christ. But Satan is the God of the atmosphere around the earth. He's the prince of the power of the air. No wonder we have strange signs in the skies in these last days. Satan's the God of this world. He's the God of the atmosphere around the earth. He's in heaven for just a little while longer, though. You know, Satan in heaven? Yes, he has access to heaven. From Job, we see him accusing Job before God. We know that he accused the brethren, but during the tribulation, during, uh, according to Revelation 12, 9, he'll be cast out of heaven forever in that battle with the good angels and the wicked angels. He'll be cast out of heaven forever. You know that Satan accuses the brethren before God. That's the church, the Christians. He accuses us and, ah, oh, he's not really here. Look what he's doing, Lord. He's not serving you. He's not. So one day he won't be able to do that. One day he won't be able to do that. He's going to be kicked out of heaven forever. But this is unfortunately during the tribulation. So the church will have to put up with Satan accusing us before God. But we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who comes along and says, no, that's not quite true, Satan. Look at my servant so-and-so at Tomahawk Missionary Baptist Church. <clears throat> They're there this morning, as they are every Sunday morning, following me, living for me during the week. You can't accuse them, Satan. You have no grounds to accuse them. We have no excuse to be deceived by Satan because we have Jesus. We have the Bible. We have testimonies. We have the Holy Spirit. We have common sense and conscience. No excuse to be fooled by Satan. You just didn't prepare. You didn't trust Jesus enough and the word of God. You didn't trust the promptings of the Holy Spirit. You got into a church that didn't teach the real word of God. A preacher that gives more stories and facts than facts and fables more than truth. <coughs> wants to tell the story of the week. Some preachers will spend a 25 minute sermon, 22 minutes telling stories about themselves. You know what I did last week? I led the entire Cincinnati Bengals football team to Christ. And you check and find out he was just dreaming it and watching them on television. He never did go there. I mean, there's so many lying preachers behind the pulpit to try to build themselves up. How do you know they're lying? Because they don't tell the truth. <laughs> they move their mouths. <laughs> you have no excuse not to follow Jesus Christ. Jesus is the light of the world, not the demonic. Romans 1, Romans 2 tells us there is no excuse. You can't come before God and say, I didn't know. I, I, I just put it off too long, Lord. Yeah, yeah, you're right on that one. You did know, but you did put it off too long too. Don't be surprised. Satan can transform, transform himself. And what's even more frightening is demons can transform themselves. St. Corinthians eleven fifteen 15 says, Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Somehow we have demons in the pulpits of the world today. Jack, you saying preachers are demonic? Absolutely. Amen. I would say we have many thousands of demons who are pastoring churches today, especially in America. Men and women who are demon possessed and influenced. How else could you explain why they support abortion and gender reassignment and homosexuality? We have many false teachers living opulent lifestyles, deviant, sexually deviant, making millions of dollars and wanting more and more, fleecing the flock, yet people follow them blindly. Demons can do miracles, you know, just enough to fool people. Tricks. People are so gullible. That's why Jesus never committed himself to the miracle-seeking crowd. Janice and Jambres copied Moses' miracle of turning the staff into a serpent, you know. So don't follow somebody just because you see a so-called miracle. I mean, God does. He's in the miracle-working business. But you've got to check all things out by the scriptures. You know, I uh, hate to say it, but we're just idiots sometimes. Uh, I'm an idiot lots of the time. Uh, we, can, we can't see how fallen angels have used us and abused us, and yet we keep turning, on, turning to them. What do you mean by that, Brother Jack? How is that? No one turns to the devil, nobody. I say, yes, they do. We turn to false messiahs. 
We turn to self-help books. We turn to psychology. We turn to false teachers. We turn to bad, unbiblical preachers. We turn to the government as savior. We turn to bodily exercise and fitness to the extreme. You should exercise and have some form of fitness, but not to the extreme. We turn to, uh, well, God made me wrong. I'm going to change my sex. Uh, we turn to, well, God made me have an attraction for the same sex. You know, this lie, God didn't make you wrong. And God's not to blame for, we're in a fallen sinful world. That's why some babies are born with defects. That's why some people have cancer. That's why some people get sick. It's not your sin personally. It's just we're under a fallen world. It rains on the just and the unjust. But your sex your DNA, your chromosomes are not changeable. It's just a fact. You can't add six toes. I mean, just some things, you only got two legs, two arms, two eyes. You can't change some things. All these things that think we can change ourselves, the basic of what we are, are demonic. All lies and hatred are demon inspired. Demons love to come across with all the answers. They're so sneaky. They're proud like their master. Notice what Galatians 1.8 says. Galatians 1.8. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have, we have preached unto you, let them be accursed. Now here's the coming great deception. 31 angels are mentioned in the book of Revelation, you know, alone. So they are going to be very active in the last days. Angels are going to preach another gospel to the world, I believe. Is it through the UFO or the unidentified aerial phenomenon, they like to call it now, appearances? Will it be through them? I don't know. Will they be, preach the gospel of human origin, they being the origin of humanity? Will they preach that false gospel? The Bible says, but though we or an angel from heaven... Preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be a curse. There's, I believe Paul is telling us there's going to be angels from heaven preaching another gospel. The gospel of humanity. Home, uh, evolution is a false gospel started by wicked angels, I believe, in the hearts of wicked men. I think that they're going to be planting uh, this idea that UFOs planted the seed of mankind many billions of years ago in the cosmos. And they chose this little speck. This little speck happens to be the center of God's creation, the planet Earth. We're not just a speck. God chose the universe to fit with us. Remember Genesis says, God created the heaven and the earth. Oh, and he made the stars also. Almost forgot about that. You know, the stars are here for the planet Earth. And Jack, that's pretty silly. That's silly. <laughs> well, it's what the Bible says. Uh, God can create, uh, like I told you, it's all in perspective. If you're a molecule, this desk is your universe. Bigger than the universe that we stare at every night. So it's all in your perspective. Listen, why would beings from a faraway galaxy come this far to the earth just to hide? <laughs> Oops, they saw me. Oh, it's just exciting. It's exciting. They're almost catching us. They come here from billions of light years just to dash around and scare airline pilots and scare people in a farm in Iowa. That advanced, huh? Sounds to me like you're playing some kind of hide and seek that children play. Come on, don't give me that. This is a satanic ruse. This is fake. Uh, they're faking us out. And people believe in it. UFO conventions track thousands and they wear their little, you know, the grays are these creatures that have the big eyes, their gray skin that everybody says they see. Well, that's probably a demonic entity. Uh, it could be, uh, they've got to take some form. Angels can take a physical form. And they've got to take something that scares us. 
So nothing scares me worse than big, dark eyes, right? <laughs> and you know, our president, look at his eyes. They used to be blue. Can I start a conspiracy theory here? That's not really him. Don't look like him. Look at his pictures from 20 years ago. He's got blue eyes. Now they're dark and he goes around like this. I am supposed to speak and this is what I'm supposed to say. Oops, I dropped my card. You know, that's not him. Anyway, I'll edit that out. <laughs> uh, let me tell you. Verse, here's the great part. 2 Corinthians eleven fifteen. 15. Whose end shall be according to their works. They're going to have an end. Ephesians 6, 12 says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There's wickedness up high, down low, everywhere. But they're going to have an end. Their goal is to destroy Israel, as many of God's people, and as many of God's people as they can, to set up a worldwide kingdom that will usurp the kingdom of God. They know God's kingdom is coming. They can read the Bible. They'll come to an end, and I believe they, they really ought to know it. We need to remind them of that every day. But Satan, the master deceiver, has deceived them also. But they will have an end one day. Satan and his angels will not be active forever, and they and their lying and deception will end one day. First, they'll be cast out of heaven in a battle during the tribulation, Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. There you go. Then they'll be cast in the lake of fire. They're cast out of heaven to the earth. Boy, that's going to be bad for the earth. All these angels, on wicked angels have come to the earth and they're mad. Satan is their leader and he's very angry. He knows his time is short. That's why we're not here during the tribulation. We're in heaven. Secondly, the angels will finally be cast in the lake of fire. Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he also say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. That's where they're going to wind up. They will end, and we who trust in Jesus will just be beginning. And we'll judge them in the end. That's a payback for all the torment they've caused us. Satan's angels have tormented us and as the church for years and years since Jesus started the church at Pentecost, the devil's angels have been tormenting the church, killing us, leading others to kill us and persecute us and make us look like fools. Well, one day we're going to get them back. First Corinthians 6, 3. Now ye not, no, sorry, know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? They will end they will be in the lake of fire, but before that, we get to judge them. I don't know what that pertains to. I guess every one of us have a demon or somebody that's tried to influence us and trip us up as Christians. In the end, we're going to get to say, get out of here, slew foot. Maybe. <laughs> that's when we can call them names. Right now, we better not because we need to respect their power and give them over to God who will destroy or restrain them. But one day, at that day of judgment, I guess God's going to say, okay, church, let them have it. Say anything you want to say. You know, at a court trial, they usually get the victims, get to get up and say to the accused what they really think of him. I think that's what's going to happen. We're going to get to tell the devil and his angels what we really think of him. Think of them and what they've done to us. But you know, they really haven't harmed us at all but if we, unless we let them. Because Jesus is Lord and King. They will end. What a statement. No more deceiving. No more tricks. No more lies. No more deception of God's people. No more interference of God's work any longer. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil, his work is short. So don't be surprised. Satan can transform himself. Demons can transform themselves. Angels are everywhere, people. They're only messengers of God. We don't worship them. They were created by God. We are created in God's image. We will judge angels one day. Therefore, we have much more value than angels. God has a plan to redeem man. He has no plan to redeem angels. Therefore, we have the greater opportunity to receive Christ and be born again into his kingdom where we will never falter nor ever fail in Jesus Christ. Eternal life is the, by the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Have you ever received that gift that even the angels cannot obtain? 
It's the opportunity of a lifetime. Those demons, especially those chained up, would give anything for the opportunity you have to re be redeemed by the blood of Christ. But they cannot. But you can. As long as you're above ground, you can become whatever God wants you to be. Let's pray.